Well, God bless all of you and good evening to each and every one of you. Welcome to Refresh in the Word. I am your host, Bishop Ontario L. Jones, the proud pastor of Fresh Oil International Church right here in the city of Fort Worth. And we are definitely excited about what God is getting ready to do. Listen, I see all of you coming on in to our broadcast. And listen, I want you to do Bishop a favor. I want you to share as it relates to our broadcast on tonight, I believe that somebody will be encouraged and inspired as it relates to what the spirit has to say to us on tonight. Whether you are joining us by YouTube or if you're joining us by Facebook, we want to say thank you again to all of our parishioners, of course, that are connected to Fresh Oil. Uh, myself and Lady Jones, we love each and every one of you. Thank you for your continued support week in and week out. Um, as it relates to the launch of our ministry, we are now over two months old. And I tell you what, God is blessing in an incredible way. Man, I am just pumped as it relates to what he is getting ready to do next. And so we are living in our next and our necessary. And so we are definitely excited about what God is doing. And so listen, Fresh Oil, I love you so much, man. I'm definitely praying for you. To all of our guests that are chiming in, uh, thank you so much for just carving out some time for some teaching on this Tuesday night. I believe that God has something to say to all of us. And so uh, even before I dive into the word of the Lord on tonight, I'm going to go to God in prayer and uh, give a couple of announcements, first of all, and then we will see um what the spirit has to say to us even on on tonight let me just give a couple of announcements and then i'll go into the word um and and pray but i i'm excited about what god is doing of course through fresh oil and what we're getting ready to experience and i just wanted to share a couple of announcements of course this weekend we are definitely excited about our fall festival 2021 and that is going to be this coming sunday from one to three and i wanted to share that with you of course um myself and uh new breed christian center pastor daryl blair lady latonya blair and the entire new breed christian center is connecting with fresh oil on this coming Sunday for our fall festival. We do have a fundraiser on this coming Sunday from one to three. If you are in the city and we want to drop by, that address again is 4500 South Riverside Drive. We're going to have food, fun, and fellowship. Uh, New Breed is going to be providing the games and candy, uh, bounce houses for our children. Uh, again, we've got the, the catfish dinners, the turkey legs, and uh, Bishop's Famous Burgers. I'll be on the grill myself. And so I'm excited about that. So put that on your calendar. This coming Sunday, October the 31st, um, is our Fall Festival 2021. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, again, I want to say thank you to Pastor Daryl Blair, my brother, and my sister, Lady Latonya Blair, and uh, the entire New Breed uh, family for connecting with us. That's what it's all about. It's about collaboration. And I want to thank God. Of course, many of you know Pastor Daryl Blair opened up his gymnasium for us to worship, and that's where we've been, and we're not going anywhere uh, right now. We are building um, capital, and we're building things um, as relates to me hearing God, and I'm going to keep on teaching and preaching and loving on the people um, until he says otherwise, and so we're not going anywhere. So again, I want to just say thank you um, for Fresh Oil and all that you continue to do. To my parents uh, at Fresh Oil, don't forget uh, to bring in your child's report card. We have our Academy of Scholastic Achievement, and there are some requirements, of course, for your child uh, to be on the Bishop's Dean list. So please make sure um, that you're bringing in the report card so that we can honor your student as it relates to their grades and citizenship and all of that. And we've got some incentives this year uh, developing our scholarship program. And so we're definitely excited about that. So again, thank you so, so much to our parents. So again, bring that in um, this coming Sunday uh, so that we can make sure that we honor those students. And then of course, Fresh Oil, don't forget you're getting ready to purchase your t-shirts. Uh, please make sure you're getting those in our design, our logo, 
all of that is complete. And so we're just grateful and we're excited, man, about what God is getting ready to do. So listen, let's go to God in prayer and um, see what the spirit has to say to us on tonight. Kind Father, we thank you for continuing to navigate our circumstances. We pray even now, God, that you continue to be in the midst of our teaching on tonight, bring clarity and understanding of your word. I pray, God, that you use me as an instrument of transformation, that your people will be inspired and they will be encouraged. I thank you, God, for every pastor and their congregation. I pray that you bless them in an incredible way. Their congregation is blessed, that pastor is blessed, and they're walking in favor. Now, God, I lift up even the parishioners that you have uh, made me overseer of a fresh oil. I pray that you continue to bless us, continue to add as you see fit. And uh, Master, we'll be careful to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, listen, I am excited about sharing the word of the Lord on uh, this evening. Yes, I see all of you chiming in. Do Bishop a favor and um, uh, tag someone. Let them know that there's an inspiring word that's about to come forth and tag and share on your on your pages. So they can see um, what the spirit of God is saying to us on tonight. Even before I dive into um, the lesson on tonight, I do want to give you a scripture and I want you to write it down or put it in the comments. Um, and because I believe that many times as I have been dealing with emptiness, uh, the last time that we met, we didn't meet last week, but the prior week to that and the week before that, I had been dealing with the, the spirit of emptiness because a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, let's just be honest, life has a way or a proclivity of bringing us to that place of emptiness. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how many scriptures you know. I don't care how uh, how you know well you dance or, sh uh, or shout or whatever the case may be. All of us have entered or been in that place of emptiness. And sometimes it leaves you scratching your head. It leaves you wondering, has God forgotten about me? Um, does God even know where I am? I mean, I'm going through some stuff. It seems like I'm the only one that's going through it. But can I encourage you tonight that you're not the only one that's experiencing setbacks? You're not the more, only one that's experiencing problems, even financially, psychologically. Maybe you've even had a, a place of loneliness as it relates to, um, you know, loss of a loved one. You know, just within 24 to 48 hours, I have seen even on social media right here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, many people who uh, were at church that morning and then the Lord called them home that evening. Um, and so it behooves the body of Christ to make sure that not only our relationship with Jesus Christ is intact, but our relationship with each other is intact. Because when you look at Luke chapter two, verse 52, the Bible declares that Jesus grew in statue. He grew in wisdom, favor with God and favor with man, which means we serve a relational God. And so it's very important that you understand that even while I'm in my emptiness, even while I'm in that cave, so to speak, I still believe that God has a way of escape. And I want to encourage you tonight. I want to give you a scripture even before I dive into the intensity of the text that I want to share with us tonight. But I want you to write down Isaiah chapter 40. I want you to write down Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 29. Those of you, you can put it in the comments for me. Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 29. This is what the text says. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. I'm going to say it again. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Now, I'm sure that all of us have experienced feeling weary or weak from doing a task or the overwhelming um, uh, feeling of trying to make sure that things are done or things are accomplished. And so sometimes you go through that phase to where you become weary and you're trusting God. You're, you're saying, God, I'm weary in my body. I'm, I'm weary in my mind, but I believe God that you are going to give me the power 
to endure and watch this to finish strong. Can I tell you, and this is not even in my notes, but I need to give this to at least 15 of you across the country, that if you finish strong, if you decide from a perspective, I am going to finish strong, God says, watch this, I am going to give you the power and the strength to endure and to finish strong. That's why the Bible says, according to Luke 10 and 19, that I've given you power. I've given you the dunamis in Greek. I have given you the ability to tread over serpents and scorpions and by no other means, nothing shall harm you. That's the type of perspective that you got to have in this last quarter of 2021. We're in the fourth quarter. And so it's imperative that you understand that I have to let the devil know you tried it, but you lost again because I am a winner. I need somebody to look at a neighbor or somebody in your living room and tell them I'm a winner. Matter of fact, put it in the comments. I am a winner. Sometimes I say that every week and I I mean to be redundant on purpose, because when I get that in your spirit, as it relates to you being a winner, that whatever the devil tries to throw at you, it would not watch this. The weapons may form, but they will not prosper. And so when I looked at Isaiah 40 and 29, he says he gives strength to the weary and increases increases. That means even that you're at an all-time low emptiness, I'm going to increase the power of the weak. It's then when we, we might realize that our human strength is limited. And this correlates or, or, or par- parallels, if you will, for people who are in an empty place. Because God says, I'm going to increase your strength because watch this. You cannot get it accomplished in your own human effort. Who am I talking to? You've been trying to rely on your intellectuality. You have been trying to rely on your skill set. You have been trying to rely on the on the anointing or the things that the power that you may feel like you have. But until you put all of that in the hands of God, let him multiply it and let him bless it. And the text says, watch this, that he will increase. So as you're doing well and you're trying to finish strong and it feels like you're getting weak, that's when the Bible says that he will, watch this, increase the power of the weak. So God's strength will revive us. It will cause us to outrun chariots. It will cause us to run and not be weary. It would give us the boost of energy that we need. Saints of God, God's strength is available to us tonight. Stop trying to use your own strength that is short-lived and use the strength of God. Who am I talking to? You may be in that place of emptiness, and that's where it's going to bring me tonight to talk about a gentleman that maybe you have already heard, but I don't want you to look at it from a familiar lens as it relates to who I'm going to be talking about tonight. His name, of course, is, it's a tongue twister, um, but his name is Mephibosheth. And when you talk about Mephibosheth and you understand the history of Mephibosheth, and before I even get into Mephibosheth, because I hear the spirit of God and he's moving on somebody that's listening to my voice. Can I just tell you, Real quickly, something, and I want somebody to type this, life can change in an instant. I I want somebody to type that real quickly. Life can change in an instant. It can change with an unexpected phone call. It could change as it relates to a sudden move, a single decision, a simple conversation. Many of us can look back and identify the moment when the course of our lives was altered for good or for bad. Sometimes it resulted from a choice we made or an action that we took. Other times it was the choice someone else made or the choice to drink and drive, the choice to turn and leave, the choice to stay and fight that changed everything. And sometimes there is no place or no person at which we can point the finger of blame or responsibility. It just happened. And again, life can change in an instant. And when life changes and it brings alterations or adjustment to our lives, sometimes we're ready for it and sometimes we're not. In those moments that we're not, we could find ourselves in an empty place. 
And so I've been talking about how God deals with our empty places. Tonight, I want to deal with God feels, watch this, God feels our emptiness. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. God deals with our emptiness um, with kindness. God feels our emptiness with kindness. Now, let me go, if you will, to the, the gentleman that I wanted to talk about tonight. And of course, his name is Mephibosheth. You will find his story in 2 Samuel chapter 9. I'm talking about Mephibosheth. Okay. Now, the Bible says uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 5, somebody can type that um, for me. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, and David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, art thou Ziba? And he said, thy servant is he. And the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son who is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Micah, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then the Bible says, then King David said or sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now, when I look at this and I've preached this on many occasions as a relates uh, to Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is probably one of, he's on my top 10 list as it relates to one of my favorite characters in the Bible. His name, of course, is a tongue twister, Mephibosheth, but it is not nearly as twisted as his life because the Bible describes him as being lame in his feet. His story is tragic um, because he, I want you to, I want you to see this. His life is tragic because he could have been, he should have been king over Israel. He was the grandson of Saul, just to give you a little bit of historicity so I can paint a picture of where I'm going. He, he is the, he's the grandson of Saul, who was the first king of Israel. He should have been a strong, handsome, viral leader like Jonathan, his father. But instead, we find Mephibosheth, we see he's twisted, he's bruised, he's incapacitated, he's, he's a victim whose broken ankles and twisted limbs have exiled him to a terrible place called Lodabar. I want somebody to type that word Lodabar. You spell it L-O-D-E-B-A-R, Lodabar, L-O-D-E-B-A-R. Now, from the rabbi scholars, Lodabar, which literally translates in the Hebrew, a place of no communication. Let me let me pull away from the notes so I can make it applicable. Whenever God has you or you go through a certain situation to where you feel like you're in an empty place, you're actually, watch this, it parallels, you're actually in a place called Lodabar. Mm. Lodabar in the Hebrew means no communication. Have you ever been in an empty place where it seems like there is no communication between you and God? And that's the reason why you feel like you're all by yourself is because there is no communication. You feel like God is not speaking to you. You feel like God has forgotten about you. You feel like he's blessing others and he has forgotten about you. But I come to speak to you and let you know that even when you're in your place of Lodabar, you still have to continue to look to the hills from which cometh your help because your help comes from the Lord and from him alone. And so it's, a, it's imperative that you understand that even while you're in Lodabar, that place of no communication, God says, watch this, even the Hebrew writer comes back and says that he would never leave you nor will he forsake you. In other words, when I feel like I'm by myself, God says, no, you're not. I'm right there. I know what you're going through. 
I know the experiences that you're, you're going through. I know the loss was great. I know people walking away from you hurt you. I know people scandalized your name hurt you. I know that you tried to trust in individuals and it, it didn't end up working out in your favor. They used your dream to advance their dream. I know exactly where you are. You feel like you're in Lodabar, a place of no communication, but guess what? Just when you're in that empty space, Spot. God says, I got a word and an answer that will push you to a whole nother dimension. I need you to look at somebody and tell them he's still talking to me. <laughs> Glory to God. He is still talking to me. So the scholars say that Lodabar, when literally translated from the Hebrew means a place of no communication, because when you say lo, L-O means no, and debar or devar means word. In other words, you, when you're in an empty place or you're in that place of, of no communication, you feel like there's not a word for your life. That's why it's imperative for you to get underneath good teaching from the, your local church and from your local pastor so that when you are going through experiences, you can get a word from the man or woman of God that will speak to your situation that will bring word. Because watch this. That's why when you go throughout the week, whether it's on your job, you got issues, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your finances, there is a word from the Lord. But the enemy would try to play with you cognitively to make you believe that there is no word, but the devil is a lie. And I know I got some bona fide believers tonight that is listening to me to let that devil know there is a word for my life. I don't care the mistakes that I have made. I don't care if I've fallen short. There is a word over my life. I need somebody to look at a neighbor and tell them there is a word for my life. So Mephibosheth, was a disposed or deposed maimed prince from a fallen house of kings. And, and so he's in that place of no communication. This wounded young man lost his birthright without uttering a single word or doing a single evil deed. He, watch this, he was just a frightened little five-year-old boy when he was buried in a land of silence, separated from his father, and his destiny and left to dream of what might have been. Mm, who am I talking to? You have been dreaming of what might have been. Glory to God. Have you ever been? Can I can I just ask you a question tonight? Have you ever been in that place of Lodabar? Have you ever been in that place to where you feel like there is no communication? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? How brokenness in one area can rob us of a rightful success and imprison us in a valley of regret. A silent place where no one can hear our pain or ease our sorrow. Have you ever been in that? That's why I asked you. Have you ever been in that place of Lodabar to where it seems like you can't get no help? Nobody comes to your rescue, but, but it seems like you go to everybody else's rescue. Oh, who am I talking to? You've gone to everybody else's rescue. You've helped them in their situations. You've helped them in their low to bar. But when it came to you being in low to bar, you couldn't find nobody. You couldn't find a dog. You couldn't call nobody to encourage you. They were busy, so forth and so have you. And God says, every now and then, I will place you in Lodabar so that I can have, watch this, communion with you. And it may feel like you're in isolation, but I need communion with you. I need to be able to speak to you. Why? Because you got too many voices in your ear. And the reason why some of us can't go to the next dimension is because we got too many voices that are operating and flowing in our ears. That's why you got to make sure that the oil of the Lord is up on you. Glory to God. And that's why they would put the oil on the sheep because the sheep, watch this, bugs and insects had a, a tendency to get on the sheep and they would put oil on the sheep so that when the insects would get up on the sheep, the insects would slide right down because if insects got in the ears of the sheep, then the sheep would die. We are like unto sheep. And if we don't have the oil of the 
the Lord. Lord have mercy. You'll start hearing all kinds of stuff and you will forfeit your destiny because you're listening to the wrong voice. Glory to God. And I need somebody to listen tonight because you are oily. I need, no, 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 no. I need you to lay hands on yourself and say, I'm oily and I know it. I know I got the oil of the Lord and now I've got to be protective over the voice and the things that I hear so that it will not kill me where I'm trying to go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you will have you will have the statement. What could have been? What should have been? What could have been? What should have been? But the fact of the matter is, is that we got too many people listening to the wrong voice. Glory to God. And so watch this. Mephibosheth could have been, he could have been a king, but there was a problem in his life. He, he would have been great, but he had an area in his life that seemed beyond his control. I'm talking about it tonight, how God fills our emptiness with his kindness. Now watch this now. Mephibosheth, again, could have been a king, um, but there was a problem between the command and the function. He meant to do it, but he couldn't and didn't perform what he meant to perform. He was maimed and handicapped. So maybe you and I can relate to Mephibosheth's physical handicap, but we can't relate to that. But every one of us has had a certain degree of dysfunction. Mm. Jones, Jones, Jones. We could give a command in our head but it just doesn't function in our life. Our dysfunction can leave us in Lodabar, a place of no communication. It can leave us in Lodabar, gagged, hopeless, and alone when we could have been or we should have been sitting at the table. Sitting at the table. And that's one of the reasons why I want you to know, um, and I'm going to put it on the screen for you, kings sit at the table. I need you to lay hands on yourself tonight and I need you to tell yourself I belong at the table. I don't care how empty I'm feeling. I don't care my mistakes. I don't care what people have said about me because they better be careful of putting their mouth on the anointed because I still belong at the table. I need you to ju just lay hands on yourself and say, self, you belong at the table. And I, I want you to type that, I belong at the table. And so watch this, it's powerful when I look at this because again, Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son and King Saul's grandson. He was the only surviving heir and male descendant of Israel's first royal family. Okay. He should have been groomed to be king over Israel, but instead his father was tragically killed in the battle. He was left living a, living like a broken down recluse in Lodabar. He was stripped of his crown, wounded in spirit, a long forgotten prisoner of his own infirmity. Yet the only thing wrong with Mephibosheth was that he was lame in both of his feet. Here, here you have wretched Mephibosheth. He's a, he's a vivid picture of you and me. Okay, you and me trying desperately to deal with our inward handicaps without letting anyone know. And here's 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 what's what's powerful in, in Christendom is that we cannot paint the picture that Christianity is perfect. All of us, I don't care what your title is, because when I put my collar on as as a bishop or as a pastor, when I put my behind the collar, okay, behind the collar. Is circumstances behind the collar is me being human behind me preaching is me being human behind you singing behind you serving in the church you're still human and so we have grown accustomed to looking at people with issues and believe that they don't have a right to sit at the table. We'll say things like, why does that pastor have them serving when they know they got such and such going on? Why is that pastor having such and such and such do this when they know that they such and such? So the question becomes, what are you still dealing with? Mm -hmm. Because you, I said this years ago, um, and it, it, it sounds cliche um, but you're trying to judge my life when your life is still on probation. Mm -hmm. 
you 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 trying to judge where somebody else is but when you look at your life your life is still on probation one mistake you could get fired one mistake your marriage could be over what one one mistake don't look at somebody else's life when your life is still on probation and so watch this you got wretched Mephibosheth but he's dealing with a handicap and many of us even though we belong at the table we don't deny reality that we've got some handicaps on the inside of us who am I talking to and so watch this Mephibosheth is the model for every last one of us who should have been here but instead ended up there the reason many people in Lodabar um, end up in Lodabar instead of the palace is because something occurred in their life that so traumatized them that it kept them from reaching the hope of their calling. And so now you have Mephibosheth, watch this, he's being carried to the calling. Still talking about um, how God feels our emptiness. He's feeling our, our emptiness tonight with kindness. I want you to see something in spite of your issues, in spite of the things that have have you, you felt like may have set you back. God can fill you with kindness. I want you to see this because the Bible says in 2 Samuel 9 and 16, when Phibosheth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, was coming unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan's, thy father's sake. And I restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shalt look upon me such as, as a dead dog as I am? Then the Bible says, um, Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and all to the house. Okay? That thou therefore, thy sons, thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, um, thy master's son. And so it goes on and say that, you know, Mephibosheth began to eat at the table and, and, and all of that. But Mephibosheth, at the time, I want you to understand the history, at the time that he came to the table, he was a grown man, okay? Now, when you encounter um, him as the grown man, the Bible says that he had to be carried basically to the calling. So it all began when David called in Ziba, told the servants, you know, who do you have left? You know the whole story. I want to, I don't want to bore you with that. Um, go get him in Lodabar, the place of no communication, the land of loss, the land of forgotten potential. So David's answer was immediate and forceful. He said to his messengers, um, or perhaps even to Ziba, go and fetch him out. Okay, go and don't don't miss that. And I don't want to pass that as it relates to the text. He says, go and fetch him out. Jonathan and David were close friends and covenant brothers. The Bible clearly shares that they had most intimate covenant relationship two men could have as friends. And so unfortunately, though, there was a problem. Although Mephibosheth was called, here it is. Let me slow down. Even though Mephibosheth was called, he couldn't come on his own. Someone had to go and get him. The real truth of the matter is that many of us have been called, but we can't get to the place we've been called to dwell in because we are so distracted and crippled by our own brokenness. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen, when you are in a place of emptiness and people want to help you. It's okay. I know you feel like you're Superman. I know you feel like it, but there are moments where you got to be Clark Kent. You got to realize that I'm human. You can't turn into Superman all the time. You got to be Clark Kent and Clark Kent needs some help. And so you got to identify that. Watch this. You got to identify those who have your heart, your best interest at heart that will help carry you to your calling. I hope I'm helping somebody. Okay. And so we hear the voice, but we can't get up. David sent the servant Ziba to fetch Mephibosheth out of the place of no communication, which was Lodabar. In this scene, I feel like Ziba is a type of the Holy Ghost. 
Okay, he comes to to the Holy Ghost comes to get us out of the valley of silent sorrows and oppression. Who am I talking to? The Holy Ghost is coming to get you out. Okay, <clears throat> you got to trust the fact that the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And saying, I know where you are, and I'm coming to get you. Okay, get out of your sorrow, get out of that cave, get out of that empty place, and let me bring you to where you need to be. And notice this, notice this, because I want you to see something. That the text says that he came and he fell again. <laughs> I don't want to, matter of fact, let me back up, let me back up. Somebody at the age of five dropped him. His nurse dropped him. Trying to run out. The text says she dropped him. When she dropped him, he became lame in both feet. Can I ask you a question? As you are navigating through life and as you look back over your life up until now, Ask yourself a question. Who dropped you? Could it have been your parents? Could it have been uh, somebody that you trusted, that you confided in, and they dropped you? Were you vulnerable to the point to where you thought you could trust individuals, but they dropped you? There are many people that come week after week to our congregations, pastors, that have been dropped. Week after week, they have trusted individuals. There may have been some things that have happened in their life, maybe to uh, uh, from molestation to rape, the whole they have been dropped. And so the atmosphere has to be conducive for healing and breakthrough. That's why I can only speak for fresh oil that on first Sundays, I've declared Miracle Sunday. Because I believe the spirit of God, as he was talking to me, and he talks to pastors differently as it relates to their congregations. But for me and for Fresh Oil, we know that first Sunday, we're bringing issues, problems, uh, physical ailments, things of that. And we are laying hands and believing God for healing and breakthrough. Because at one point, that person that's entering into that door, they've been dropped somewhere. And, and we've gotten good at covering up the being dropped. We've gotten good at it. We've shouted. We've danced. We've gotten good at covering up being dropped. But you still have not worked through that thing and allowed the Holy Ghost to move upon you and to bring you to a place to where at least you can function. And the reason why I say that is because Sometimes God will bring you to a place of wholeness. He will bring you to a place of healing. He'll bring you to that place of breakthrough. But what do you do when God just gives you or musters you the strength to endure what you're experiencing? Because Mephibosheth didn't get healed. <laughs> he didn't get healed. You can read it all in your Bible. And second, Mephibosheth. There wasn't a healing service. There wasn't a breakthrough service. There wasn't a saying, get up and walk, Mephibosheth. It wasn't. He was still handicapped. But at the end of the day, he still sat at that table. And I'm telling you tonight, in your emptiness, in your handicapped situation, God still has a table and a chair that's RSVP'd for you. Lay hands on yourself right now and say, that seat is for me. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself that. My seat, that seat is for me. My God. Because you got a lot of people. Here it is. Here it is. Drop me. He dropped me, right? The nurse dropped him. And here's the thing. When you've been dropped and you identify where you've been dropped, how you've been dropped. Now you can come before his presence, not in shame, mm -mm, not in shame, but to say, Father, I've been dropped. Mm -hmm. I've been dropped, God. 
I, I've been dropped on many occasions. I don't even know how I'm making it right now, God, but it's by your grace. Because watch this, watch this. When he got dropped, it seemed like he fell out of grace, grace, unmerited favor. Seems like he fell out of grace. But let me show you the blessing. When he came into the presence of David, the text says he fell. He fell. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got dropped the first time. Seemed like, and you were lame in your feet as a result. Seemed like to me, you fell out of grace because you were supposed to be the next king. Fell out of grace, unmerited favor. But then when you bowed and gave reverence to David, you fell back into grace. Glory to God. Y'all missed that. You, you, you were dropped, Mephibosheth, the first time that made you fall out of grace. But when you got into the presence of the king, you bowed again and fell into grace. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to? You may have felt that in your emptiness that you fell out of grace, maybe because of your mistakes. Maybe because you um, got caught this or did that or whatever the case may be, you fell out of grace. But because you had a repentative spirit to say, Father, I made some mistakes. I bow in your presence. You now fell into grace. Fell out, fell in. Fell out, fell in. Fell out, fell in. In. And I need to speak to somebody tonight. You're getting ready to fall back in. You belong at that table. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. You belong at. I need somebody to type it again. I'm getting ready to RSVP. Because mm -hmm. I belong at this table. I belong at this table. And so here it is. Again, he's one of the characters in the Bible. And I just said that he never got healed. Okay. He ate all of his life. He was wounded all of his life. Okay. We've become, many of us have been damaged, but yet he was still at the table. I mean, and I, I'll put it in simple terms. Many of you may know people who got in a car wreck. Okay. And they survived. Maybe in the car wreck though, their leg got crushed. Okay. Leg got crushed. Over time, the leg healed, right? Okay, but how many of y'all know in certain seasons of the year, the leg may end up aching because of a past injury? Ooh. Jones, leave that, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Glory to God. Sometimes I get, yeah, yeah. And so that's something that we have to be honest about and Christianity has been disappointing of the minds of many people because we have we can lay hands on them um you know and and ask God to bring healing and he will he will that's the type of God that we serve um but we got to help them deal with childhood injuries with things of that nature so they can be able to open up or maybe get them to a counselor because at the end of the day we can't answer everything pastors we can't answer everything. Sometimes they need to call the 1-800 number and get professional help. Okay. Don't, don't, especially if you're not a licensed counselor. I know we counsel through the word of God, but when we're not a licensed counselor, they need some help. So maybe they need to open up and they will respect you as a leader to say, my leader cares for me that they'll help get me some help. Am I making sense? All right. I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna, get, I'm finna, I'm finna get out of here. You belong at the table. Okay. Write this. Uh, somebody type this for me. Your position can overcome your condition. Your position can overcome your condition. Somebody type that for me. Your position can overcome your condition. Because we need the freedom in the church to say, I'm in position, but I still have a condition. Okay, that's the reason why we can't paint 
Christendom as being perfect. I'm in position, but I still have a condition. And so here it is. He's sitting at the table, right? But from waist up, that's all you can see. Waist up, that's all you can see. I got five minutes and I'm done. Waist up is all you can see because the table is covering the condition. Are you seeing that? So when you look at me, even while you're watching me now live, you see this up, okay? Because I'm sitting at the table. Are you hearing me? So when you look at Mephibosheth, you see him waist up and you see he's, he's, he's sitting at the table. He belongs with the kings. Kings sit at tables. In other words, royalty sits at the table. I need you to do me a favor. Lay hands on yourself and say, I am a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. I'm peculiar. I am royal and I belong at the table. Let me hurry up. Sitting at the table. My position can, can overcome your condition. Okay, let me let me pull it to you. Let me let me prove it to you real good, and then I, and then I'm done. Um, um, the table is a representation. If I had a Hammond B3, I'd be doo -doo 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 -doo. this would be my clothes. Even though he's sitting at the table, and you can only see him waist up, the table is a typology of the blood. <laughs> Glory to God. No matter your mistakes, no matter, God, I felt my voice change. No matter where you are, the blood, <laughs> glory to God, it will cover you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will cover you. Your position is you're the righteousness of God. Your condition is that you're still human and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to feel like that you're in the cave or in your empty place by yourself. But the blood says the reason why you can stay in position is because I shed my blood and it's covering you in spite of your mistakes. You can look at it. I can even take you all the way back to Genesis. When Adam and Eve were naked, the Bible says that they showed fig leaves covered them glory to god covered uh, yeah. <laughs> jesus was already yeah, yeah, yeah. foreshadowed in the garden because the fig leaves was a typology of the blood yeah cover glory to god cover your humanness covered your nakedness covered your mistakes covered your mishaps the spirit of God said to me, for me to remind you that in your cave, in your emptiness, he is going to show kindness. He can fill you back up with kindness. You don't have to be, but because we serve a sovereign God, he wants to show you kindness. And that's why that's all I wanted to share with you tonight is because I got I got one minute. I got to share. He wants to fill you back up with kindness. Get ready to get back to the table. You've allowed, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but you have allowed so many things to go on in your life, and you have allowed it to keep you stagnant. And the spirit of God said to, for me to tell you tonight, you're coming out of stagnation and you're getting ready to get back to the table. Congratulations. Congratulations. As a matter of fact, somebody typed that. Congratulations. You have survived some of the worst seasons in your life. And many people who, who know, who have been, been with me for a while, even that fresh oil knows sometimes I'll close with that. That you have survived some of the worst seasons of your life. Congratulations. You didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. 
you let that devil know I got a bounce back spirit and I'm getting out of Lodibar, that place of no communication, because there is a word for my life. Glory to God. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you for continuing to be a blessing to us. I pray, God, even as we rightly divided the word of truth, that it fell on good ground, producing a harvest in the life of the believers. We bless you and we honor you and thank you, God, for what you're continuing to do. I speak tonight, those who may be in an empty place, God, fill them back up with kindness. Let them know, God, that they still belong at the table. No matter their mishaps, their conditions, it would not negate their position because the blood covers. And we honor you and thank you tonight for what you're getting ready to do. Now, Spirit of the living God, arrest our minds and our hearts, even this week. God, I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I pray that you comfort them and let them know that you're a God that never makes a mistake. We may not always understand the why behind the what, God, but yet we know that you're in control. So I decree and I declare it. I speak even over fresh oil as you continue to bless us and increase us. I pray for every pastor and their congregation. Bless them in an incredible way. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom we love and whom we serve. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Refresh in the Word. I'm your host, Bishop Ontario L. Jones, proud pastor of Fresh Oil International Church. Don't forget this Sunday, join us Sunday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. There is a word from the Lord. And then we have our fall festival that will begin at 1, 1 p.m. from 1 to 3. Uh, collaborating with New Breed Christian Center, Pastor Daryl Blair and Lady Latanya Blair. We look forward to seeing your faces. Listen, come and pack the gym out. Man, we got room for you. And we're going to go after God in a major, major way. Well, listen, enjoy the rest of your evening. I love you for real. Always remember, be good to God and watch him be good to you. Good night and take care.